Ultimately, I think our speaker's success is attributable to a unique blend of intellect, empathy, sympathy, and an unparalleled ability to distill complex legal issues to their essence. Time and time again, judges and government officials call upon him in times of crisis and national calamity. It is my great privilege and honor and pleasure to introduce to you then our speaker today, uh, Mr. Ken Feinberg. I want to thank, um, <clears throat> I want to thank Professor Henke for those, uh, those words. I'm going to try in about 30 minutes to vindicate Richard in his introduction when he says I have a knack for simplifying complex discussion. <laughs> well, you're going to see just how simple one can pigeonhole this discussion. Every once in a while in America, not often, not often, there is a tragedy which so galvanizes the public and so triggers policymaker attention that policymakers, a judge, the Congress, a governor, the White House, decide for this tragedy and only this tragedy, let's think differently. Let's come up with a creative alternative to the regular system of compensation. There may be a tragedy, 9-11, BP oil spill, Asian orange involving Vietnam veterans coming home with diseases caused by the herbicide in Vietnam. There may be tragedies where our policymakers say, for this tragedy, let's think out of the box. Thirteen days after 9-11, Congress passed a law. And the law simply said, anybody who would rather waive their right to sue, you can't sue the World Trade Center, the, uh, the Boeing, uh, the security guard companies, Massport, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, waive your right to litigate. Instead, come into a very generous, unique compensation program. You don't have to. If you want to sue, go sue. But if you want to come into this program, you will be paid quickly, as if you went to court. And the money will be paid entirely by the taxpayer. Public compensation. 97% of all the families that lost a loved one on 9-11 entered the program voluntarily and were paid. The average claim for a death claim, the average award, $2 million, tax-free. The average award for a physical injury claim, the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, $400,000 tax-free, funded entirely by the taxpayer, you. The 9-11 fund was the right thing to do, absolutely exhibiting the best in our character, in our heritage as a people. It was a correct successful response to an unprecedented catastrophe rivaled in American history only by the Civil War, Pearl Harbor, the assassination of President Kennedy. That's it. And it worked. A week after the most, the, the most pervasive, tragic environmental disaster in American history, the BP oil spill in the Gulf. BP walked into the White House to visit with the President, walked out and announced, we will front $20 billion. 
we will pay all eligible claims arising out of loss due to the oil spill in the Gulf. We will make all eligible claimants whole. And we will do it without litigation. Anybody who voluntarily wants to participate, we're going to put up $20 billion. The White House has said the program must be designed and administered by a neutral third party. We have agreed with the White House. Let Feinberg do this one again. And we'll pay the claims. We received in 18 months well over 1 million claims from 50 states and 35 foreign countries. Build it and they will come. I was saying at lunch, I think we got something like, what, 300, 200 claims from Michigan. I didn't know the oil got up this far, but 200 claims from Michigan. It worked. As the first trial was about to begin, the Gulf Coast Claims Facility had already settled virtually all the major claims that could be brought, bending over backwards to find claimants. It paved the way for a massive settlement in the, of the remaining claims in the courtroom. Now, this is a sophisticated, legal, legally analytic group. Make sure you understand. This will be in the final exam in torts. <laughs> Make sure you understand the distinction between BP and 9-11 as an alternative to the tort system on the one hand. Draw a line down the middle of the page. And on the other hand, you've got some other examples that are not even first cousins. Let's call them second cousins. Virginia Tech. Richard mentions the Aurora Dark Knight movie shootings in the Colorado movie theater. The Indiana State Fair two years ago when that, the wind blew down the pavilion at the State Fair, killing 10 and injuring 30. But now notice, in those cases, it's important that you understand, and I'm sure you do. Virginia Tech involved $7 million of unsolicited private charitable donations that flowed into Blacksburg, Virginia. Indiana State Fair, by law, a $5 million fund to be distributed to the victims of the State Fair disaster. Aurora, $5 million. In Colorado, $5 million flows in from this individual. Oh, we feel terrible. Here's $20, $30. We'll deduct it. It's a charitable contribution, but we'll give it to the, to the victims of Aurora. In all three of those cases, you are not pioneering the resolution of catastrophic loss claims at all. That's money that is going to be distributed as a gift from private donors. You're not signing any release. You're not waiving your right to sue. It's not like BP or 9-11. Programs like Virginia Tech and Aurora are programs in which Private donations need to be distributed. You're asked to distribute them. You distribute them as a gift. It's income. It's taxable. And nobody asks you for a release or a promise not to sue. Big distinction to be drawn between programs that are joined at the hip of the tort system, like BP and 9-11, where a release is expected and programs in which you dispense private charitable money as part of a charitable impulse of the American people where the governor or a, a, um, um, a public official asks you to help do it in an equitable way. 
But all of these programs can be traced, the problems can be traced, to human nature. Believe me, it's not law that raises problems, it's human nature. It's how individuals respond to tragedy. People are extremely emotional, angry, frustrated by life's misfortune. And they will flail away at anybody in their sights. And it's perfectly understandable after what they've suffered. I conducted in the 9-11 fund 900 individual hearings. Horrible. Chilling. Mr. Feinberg, I'm 24 years old. I lost my husband. He was a fireman at the World Trade Center. And he left me with our two kids, six and four. I want, you're going to give me $2 million? I want it in 30 days. Mrs. Jones, I mean, we got to go through the process, the bureaucracy. I mean, i got to go to Treasury, get an authorization. Why do you need this money in 30 days? Why? I'll tell you why. I have terminal cancer. I have 10 weeks to live. My husband was going to survive me and take care of our two children. Now they're going to be orphans. You better get me that money fast while I still have my faculties. We got a tour. Eight weeks later, we went to her funeral. Can't make it up. The BP oil spill fund, different problems. Problems of volume. A million, 200,000 claims from Norway and Sweden and Mexico and every state in the Union. The sheer magnitude of the claims poses tremendous problems. I hired to help with that about 4,000 people. Claims adjusters, accountants, lawyers, claims processors, compounding the problem, problems of proof. Proof. Prove your damage. Well, Mr. Feinberg, Prove my idea. I mean, we do things with a handshake down here in Louisiana. Well, that may be. But I'm not paying you on a handshake. $20 billion will be $200 billion if all you need is a handshake. Document your claim. Mr. Feinberg, I'm a fisherman. I couldn't fish. I lost $100,000 because I couldn't fish in the Gulf. Okay? Prove it. Well, what do you want? Well, you got a tax return? No. I don't have a tax return. That's all right. I don't care. What else you got? Well, here's my corporate profit and loss statements. Here's my checkbooks. Here's my trip tickets to go fishing. Uh, how's that? That's okay. That's all right. I'm going to cut a check to you for $100,000, and you'll get it next week. Now, with that check, I'm sending you from the IRS a 1099. Well, I waive it. You can't waive a 1099. <laughs> I've got to deliver the 1099. You can't waive a 1099. <laughs> well, if you're going to deliver me a 1099, I withdraw the claim. You're what? You're going to get a check for 100000 Stop! Rip up the claim. If you're going to send me a 1099, I withdraw my claim, put it in the wastebasket, I'll see you later. Virginia Tech. 27 fa uh, students died and five faculty killed by a deranged student gunman. Went into a classroom barred the door, killed them all, and then killed himself. Now, I've got seven million to distribute. I will provide that everybody who died, their family, will get the same amount, $200,000.
All lives are equal. It's not tied to the tort system like 9-11. Therefore, everybody get the same. It's a gift. Everybody just get the same amount. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Feinberg. My wife died in that classroom, and she was a wage earner making $180,000 a year. Surely you're going to give me more than a student on scholarship. No, I'm not. Well, that's not fair. What's fair? Don't use that word, fair. What's fair about any of this? But if you think you're entitled to more than the, than the scholarship, turn around, hire a lawyer, and litigate. This is a gift. It's foul money. Mr. Feinberg, I was in the Aurora movie theater when this gunman came in and in front of my very eyes killed my girlfriend next to me and my boyfriend next to me. I only survived because I ducked down and played dead. But the gunman killed my boyfriend, killed my girlfriend, and all around me, blood and horror. Mrs. Jones, there's only $5 million. We're going to give 70% of it to the families of the 12 dead. And... We're going to also include, as if they were dead, for purposes of compensation, four people who are now quadriplegics or brain injuries where they'll never be without care. Those 16 people will divide up 70%. The other 30% will go to people who were physically injured by the bullets based on hospitalization. Well, wait a minute. How much are you going to set aside for mental trauma? Nothing. There's not enough money. There were 400 people in that movie theater. If I give everybody in that movie theater a million, uh, uh, $1,000, there's only $5 million to begin with. Can't be done. But I have learned some valuable lessons. These programs worked. They worked. But especially as to 9-11 and BP, don't do them again. I would be very, very skeptical about replicating these programs. You should have read some of the emails I got when I was administering the 9-11 program and BP. Dear Mr. Feinberg, my son died in Oklahoma City. Where's my check? Dear Mr. Feinberg, my son died on the USS Cole fighting terror in Yemen, the victim of a suicide bomber like 9-11. Where's my check? Dear Mr. Feinberg, you've got to explain to me. I don't understand. My daughter died in the basement of the World Trade Center in the initial attacks in 1993 committed by the very same people. How come I'm not eligible? And it's not just terror. Mr. Feinberg, last year my wife saved three little girls from drowning in the Mississippi River. And then she drowned a heroine. Where's my check? Dear Mr. Feinberg, I see here in the newspapers that you're Santa Claus. You're paying out all of this money to the victims of the BP oil spill. Well, I'm the victim of Exxon Valdez, that oil spill in Alaska we've been litigating for 20 years. How come I'm not eligible for a check? As a matter of public policy, you better be careful about carving out for very special treatment just a certain segment of people who are innocent victims. Bad things happen to good people every day in this country. And you don't have a 9-11. There was no fund 
for Katrina. Joplin, Missouri tornadoes, Tuscaloosa, Alabama tornadoes, Sandy in the Northeast last week. There's no fund to compensate victims for loss. This country frowns on elitism. It frowns on special treatment. It believes in equal protection. Giving people sort of a special, generous approach while everybody else, fend for yourself. I don't like it. I don't think it's right. So you better be careful about how often the American people think this is different. Because 9-11 and BP were different. How do I know that? Policymakers said so. So I conclude the way I started. Did the programs work? Yep. Are they a pioneering wave of the future? I hope not. And I doubt it. I really doubt it. The best place to study these programs is in a history class more than a, a, a law school class because I think these programs largely are at one with history. 